In this lesson, we'll get familiar with some of the basic three-dimensional controls, and we'll also add some levels to begin modeling our building. All right, welcome back. So we're going to start working with some of the controls. So as we're working through this project together, you know how to orbit, zoom in and out, and select multiple items, because you'll probably notice me, uh, notice me doing that kind of throughout our whole project here. And I want to make sure you can do the very simple things as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete an item. So we have this family that we had on um, on our screen here that we use as an example in our previous lesson. So I'm simply going to left click on this. You can join me join me with this one. So we'll left click on our family. Now I can delete this two ways. I can either hit the red X here underneath my modify a panel here in my ribbon, or I can right click in my workspace and I can look for delete within this menu and it'll get rid of it. Now, if I wanted to zoom in and out of my workspace, just use your wheel. We can actually use my wheel to actually go in and out of that area there. So you can zoom in and out. Easy as that. Now, orbiting is a little bit different. You'll need to be in your 3D view. So we can either access our 3D view here, like we've been doing kind of throughout the project a little bit. So we can click up there, or we can access it. Once we activate our initial view, we can actually access it down in here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to a 3D view. And you'll notice once I did that, it activated a view right here. And it's in bold here, which also lets me know that that is the view that I'm in. So now that I'm in this 3D view, I can actually select multiple items if I wanted to by holding down uh, the control button. Whenever I'm selecting or left clicking on elements, I can select multiple elements. If I wanted to deselect anything, just hit that shift button and you could select and hit shift and it'll deselect an item. Now, another thing you'll notice me doing a lot of is orbiting throughout our workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the orbit and tell you, but you'll really be able to visualize it here within this view cube. So let's hold down shift, hold down your wheel, squeeze your wheel down, and just move your mouse around, and you can see how we can actually orbit around our, our model area here. And now that we've done that, that brings me to our view cube. View cube is fairly straightforward. Just imagine your box. You have a top, bottom, front, left, right, and a back. And we can access all those views simply by clicking on our cube. So when I'm in this view, if I wanted to see the back, I'll tap on this one, and it'll bring me to the back. If I wanted to go back to the top, I'll click back on this top triangle, and it'll bring me right back. Now you can see I'm a little disoriented here. I'm kind of upside down with my model. You can simply kind of hold down Shift and orbit around like I showed you. And once you get to about this point, if you double click on that, it'll get you oriented nicely back to where your north is back to where it needs to be. And if you wanted to get into more perspective views, you can simply just click on these edges, and you can see by the nature and the behavior of this view cube, the perspectives we can actually get into. And this works on all the edges and all the corners of our model. So you'll notice me possibly doing that from time to time, but I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of orbiting. So now that we got those out the way, let's go ahead and start doing some modeling. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and get my levels in place. And adding levels in Revit is super easy, and I really like how they made that process so easy and intuitive because the last thing I want to do is exert a lot of energy and thought into some of the most simpler tasks uh, that I have to do whenever I'm drafting or working on a design for a building. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So in order for me to get elevations in place, I'm going to need to be in an elevation view. So underneath your project browser here, Let's go ahead and pick an elevation. We could pick the north elevation together. And when we do that, you see, and I scroll in here using my wheel, you'll see we have level 1, level 2, and it looks like level 1 is at 0 feet, 0 inches. So the distance between the two is 10 feet. Now, in our building, I'm going to have a floor to floor height of 12 feet, and I want to rename the very top level, or in my case, the fourth level, um, to be the roof level. So we have a couple of things we need to do here. We need to go on ahead and adjust the height manually for level two. Then I'm going to show you a quick way to do it with an offset for the remaining levels. And then I'll also show you how we can go ahead and rename that. So let's get that done. So just come over here to your level two and double click on the distance here, that 10 feet. Let's type in the distance we want. In our case, 12 feet. 12 feet, enter. And boom. Quick and easy. Just how I like it. So if you wanted to add an additional uh, level here, make sure we're in our Architecture tab. And we go to the right side here underneath Datum. Click on Level. And a couple of things will happen here. We'll, have our, we'll be in our Modify uh, tab here where we can actually use this Draw panel to either draw in our level or we can use the Pick Lines. Now, I prefer the Pick Lines, especially if you know the exact uh, floor-to-floor height that you're working with. 
Another thing you'll notice is we have our options bar, which appears here. We didn't talk much about it, but now that it's here, I wanted to show you what it is. So as you're doing random tasks uh, in Revit, you'll get the option bar up here where you can quickly access little options to kind of help speed up and add additional functions to what you're doing. So basically, I'm saying I want to be able to pick lines for me to be able to uh, select my level. But I also want to set an offset, 12 feet, right? That's our floor to floor height. But within this options bar, I also want to make sure that make plan view is checked. That way, whatever level I add, it will actually generate a floor plan view for it. Now, if I have a level that's not that important that I don't need a floor plan view for, I can simply deselect it. But in our case, I'm going to make sure it's selected because I want I want to have a level uh, one, two, three, and then a roof level. So we have our plan checked, distance in place, pick lines. Let's go ahead and do this. So if you select above the line, it'll shoot an offset or a level above. If you select below, it'll shoot below. So we'll just go ahead and select above, and boom, you just added your first level. So let's go ahead and do the next one. This will be our last one here. And now we have everything in place. Now, if you wanted to, since we uh, will have a parapet, we can actually add, come in here in the middle of actually adding levels. And I'll say my parapet's going to be about four feet. So I'll just type in the distance, four feet. And we'll add a top of parapet level. And we can quickly add levels like so. So now when I select this one, you'll notice this is locked. That means all these endpoints are locked together. So if I needed to make any adjustments, increasing the length width, or maybe my model just isn't setting right in these lines, I'll just grab them in, at this point and drag, and they all move together. And you'll notice something. As I was adding levels in here in this elevation view, those views updated here in our project browser as well. My floor plans as well as my ceiling plans. So now let's quickly go ahead and rename these. So I want to rename level four. I'm going to go ahead and rename it by simply double clicking on the level four. And we're going to call this roof level. And I'll hit enter. And I'll say yes because I want to name that view. And you can see that in my ceiling plan and my floor plan, that updated as well. And in this one here, I'm going to double click on level five and I'm going to call this one top of parapet. And I'll go ahead and hit enter for that one as well. And we'll say yes. And actually, in this case, we may not really want a view for that. So we could have said no. And we you know, may not want to have a view for the top of parapet. But we'll go ahead and keep it there for now in case we do. So now we have all our levels in place. We know how to work with our controls. We know how to access our views within this area. I say in the next lesson, we get into this doing some conceptual massing. And we get our hands dirty with our modeling. So now that we have everything set up, I'll meet you in the next lesson where we can start creating our mass.